Hi, welcome back to the breadboard. Been playing with the Keysight DSO 1102G that I have for review um, that Element 14 and Keysight kindly sent to me. And one of the uh, issues that I was having was I was playing around with segmented memory and also the bus decoding. And a few of the reviewers have already uh, done a little bit of a segment on uh, segmented memory. But with the bus decoding, um, I have a display here that I'm actually reading from uh, an ADC DAC board that I'm working on with John Cumps uh, on the Element 14 forum and I was getting some odd readings on my I2C bus and I just wanted to point this out to viewers because it can actually be a little misleading if you're not careful and if I just zoom in on my display here what you can see here if you look at the data is it's writing to port 4800, um, which is for commanding it to read. The way, oh, let me just clarify. The way that the software is written right now is it will read the ADC and immediately send the next conversion for the next channel of the analog to digital converter. That way, when you come back in, uh, you know, 200 milliseconds or whatever it might be, that reading is now already completed and ready to read. So the way that this will show up on a display is it'll have the read first and then it will have the write for the next one to start the next conversion. So if you watch this little bit down here, you can see it's sequencing CDEF, 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 okay? Um, which is the uh, picking the channel number. But what we have here is we have the 48 write, uh, 00, zero, and then reading from 48, um, and then it's getting like single digits, which implies like an 8-bit. Where's the other 8 bits of data? Because this actually sends out 16 bits at a time. And the same for the writing. It's sending out um, the write 01, which is the uh, register, so like the DAX, uh, sorry, it's the ADC select. And then it's sending out the channel number. But I believe that's also a 16-bit write. And if you look on the display here, it kind of shows you a data XX for the first channel of data, sorry, for the first byte of data for triggering. And then there's a second one, which is just grayed out, which would imply like a 16 bit that you could do. So looking at this, you immediately think, oh, well, maybe it's just working with um, data in 8 bit mode. But no, it's actually not. It's what's a little misleading here is that um, even though up here, and if you actually start zooming in and counting the, uh, let's see if I can trigger in a little closer. If you start counting, actually you can see it right now. It's already done what I was going to explain to you. Um, these clock pulses, you'll see that the whole 16 bytes of data is being read back. But the display on the bottom is actually only showing the first two. It's not compressing it to try and fit it in or extending the data window. It's only allowing this decoded data window to be the size of the actual data. So if in order to write it, it won't fit in, it's just truncating it. If I actually uh, increase the time base, so I only see this part of the data, now you can see here that I've got write zero zero, read, and now I've got the both bytes of the data that's coming back. And then I'm writing the next one, and if I scroll across here, we'll see that I'm writing CDEF, but I'm also writing 83, which is the other parameters to tell it whether to work in uh, differential mode, single channel, uh, single sided mode, uh, what speed to do the conversion at, and a few other things. But the main one here that's changing is this one for the addresses, okay? So, little thing to watch out for, and it really didn't give me a clue here um, initially, it kind of threw me for a minute because I think, and I will verify this on my Tektronix MDO3054, um, that it just wasn't showing the data and it was only working in like an 8-bit mode because of this little bit here. But in reality, it isn't. It's actually working correctly and it's displaying the data as you'd expect. The other thing that you will occasionally see here is that there are what appears to be little runts in the data. Um, now this, I've been looking at this with Jan on a few other uh, occasions and we thought this might have been an issue with 
the uh, design we had, and it actually ends up being that no, it isn't. Uh, what it is, it's part of the I2C bus when you are uh, driving address selects and then the remote end does an acknowledgement, um, it actually actively pulls down the line. So now that you've got one driving it and one pulling it down, um, there's a little bit of a voltage offset for the acknowledges, which is what these little things actually are. There's actually nothing wrong with it, and it's quite common to see that. Anyway, I just wanted to point out that um, just be aware that sometimes you may not see all the data that you expect to see and that it might actually be that you just need to expand out your window. Now unfortunately now because it's expanded out you can't see um, all of the information that you want to see. Now you can play around with the triggering. Um, right now I'm just triggering on anything of uh, seven bits of data with address 48 which is what the ADC's address is on the SPI bus sorry, on the I2C bus. Um, now you can change that around so that you could actually look for specific data um, packets or even just look for the read commands and get the data that way. But um, yeah, from the road test perspective, I just wanted to point this out because it was a little um, weird when I first saw it. Anyway, I just wanted to let you know. Uh, I will also put a uh, have a quick check on my MDO3054 and see how it compares on there and see if that was doing any different way of reading this. Now I also think you can look at this data as a um, table too. So we go into the bus menu and we can tell it to, is it there anywhere? Nope. Let me just have a look and I'll get back to you. So unfortunately it does not seem to support being able to look at the data in a table format, the MDO3054 does. But uh, the Keysight Scope has a huge advantage over the MDO3054 in that it can use the segmented memory to display the I2C or any other decoded data in a much more usable format anyway. Um, as you can see from the diagram above, with the Tektronix MDO3054, if I want to capture um, a few frames of data from this unit that I have connected up, I have to set the scope to virtually uh, two seconds per division and crank up the uh, memory depth and everything to the maximum uh, so that I can capture enough detail um, of the waveforms over a long enough period of time to allow the decoder to do its job. With the Keysight 1000 series with the decoding, using segmented memory, I can capture up to 50 frames with ease, as can be seen from these diagrams. It's just unfortunate it doesn't have the ability to show me the uh, tabular version of the data. That would have been a really nice piece of icing on the cake. Ah, oh, well. Anyway, that's it for this. I just wanted to show you a couple of quirks of the I2C bus on the Keysight 1000 series scope and um, pretty much done that. So anyway, I'll be back again soon with some more little uh, tips and tricks with the Keysight DSOX1102G in the near future. Thanks a lot. Bye.